we've come a long way. We've built champions, put technology in the driver's seat, and journeyed far beyond where the roads end. We've decarbonized, and we've transformed how and where we move forever. But before I hang up the keys, I need to see how this new electrified future is going to perform. And I've got a few friends in Germany who are willing to show me. I'm Asima Walsh, and this is Driven by Simulation. Porsche is a company with over 70 years of experience and um, we have also been racing for over 60 years now. Porsche is such a renowned brand. Can you tell us a little bit about the impressive history in motorsport? We've uh, had a lot of projects, for example the 917, uh, where we went to Le Mans for the overall victory and also won it. And um, today we have the Formula E car for the fully electric battery electric cars and we have the 963 which is covering the battery electric range. We can see the 963 in the background which is of course the 2023 car from the World Endurance Championship but today we're here to talk about uh, Formula E. This is a Gen 3 car from the Tag Heuer Porsche Formula E team. What made you enter the FIA ABB Formula E World Championship? So for Porsche, it's about electrification and sustainability. So we have a target to more and more electrify our fleet until 2030. And uh, for us, we think that Formula E is an opportunity to learn in a fast way um, how to have an efficient and fast powertrain. There's so many adjustments that can be made uh, to optimize the performance of the car. What are these adjustments and how does ANSYS help with that? So in Formula E, we do not develop the full car, as you said, we develop the powertrain. And uh, that means we have to focus on what is necessary for the car to go fast. So we need to have two things in mind. One is the system, so the powertrain with the different components interacting with each other. And we have the, the components themselves, um, where we need to understand the details to model these correctly. And then we use this knowledge and have a system simulation to um, anticipate how the powertrain is going to react on track. Let's pause for a moment. Now, it's really important to note the differences between Formula E and other motorsports, such as Formula One and IndyCar. Obviously, the goal of Formula E is sustainability, so the cars are all electric, and they are also designed to last a whole race without changing tires. This means no pit stops, no tire swaps, no refueling, and no opportunity to modify the vehicle mid-race. And you have to factor this into your race strategy. Knowing when to push the car at the right time is imperative for a successful race outcome. The small gains mean everything. Um, it can be the difference between standing on a podium with a trophy and, and not at all. So how do you find these efficiencies uh, to win the race? In motorsport, there are sometimes specific areas that need a lot of attention to detail. So we um, partnered and developed uh, methods to calculate, for example, losses in the machine or the inverter, and to do that precise but time efficient. What are you learning here that you can uh, use for the road cars? We race both on permanent race tracks, but we race in the cities and uh, we race on different continents and uh, with different climates and you have to adapt and you have to adapt at every location because in the end we want to win mm -hmm. and win as much as possible. And if I now look at the road car, Porsche Taycan for example, uh, of course it's a Porsche, it's a sports car, I, I want performance if I buy a Porsche, but I want also a certain driving range and uh, if we have knowledge gained from the racetrack on how to achieve a certain efficiency, we can use that to develop a powertrain that achieves that on the street. It's genuinely exciting to think about. All the hard work, innovation and testing done for the Porsche 99X is also used on developing the Porsche Taycan I'm driving today. It's the ultimate pay it forward in performance and technology. All right, so talk me through what's going on here. We are now looking at a model of the electric machine. We have it designed and we want to take it to the test bench. Uh, way back in, in the past, when you built a combustion engine, you kind of had an idea where to get with your torque and with your power. 
Um, but you had to measure it as a, at a test bench. So build it, put it to the test bench, yeah. and then measure it. it. Takes so much time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does. And uh, today we can simulate this, so we know um, what current is needed for what torque. And um, then we have an idea of what the machine is going to output. And it also helps us if we have built the machine and go to the test bench to already have a set of control parameters. So mm -hmm. we have our application engineers and they, they need to make the system work. And they do not start from zero, but they start from, let's say, 90%. Yeah. We often see that there are some minor effects we did not incorporate and anticipated that they would not matter that much. Mm -hmm. But the problem is we look into the details to have the fastest car. And then uh, it's a minor detail, but it has a minor change that you cannot ignore. <laughs> right. And so um, for us, it's uh, about having these detailed models, these simplified models and some analytical models. So just um, mathematical equations and how to combine them mm -hmm. to get the best results. Make sure you're not missing anything. Yes. These are new challenges and new ways of thinking which means companies like Porsche are always in need of fresh ideas and new perspectives. So I'm taking you to college to see how the automotive engineers of tomorrow are using simulation to change the future of mobility. The UGR program is our university's formula student team. We compete across three different classifications. So we have a concept class, an FS class and a driverless class. All the work that we do is done entirely with our university studies. So it's all of our own backs, we're entirely student run. Using simulation is obviously a big part of your work here mm -hmm. uh, in the racing team. What have you learned so far using simulation and looking towards the future, using ANSYS, how, how does that evolve the cars uh, for the team? Well, evolve the cars is probably exactly the correct thing. It allows us to do iterative design. So ANSYS is used within the um, EV branch of our team. Obviously, as a first year EV car, we have to make sure we're doing things safely. Mm -hmm. We don't have a huge background of knowledge going in. So being able to simulate things saves us some very potentially huge disasters and yep. um, so we're able to make sure that these batteries don't explode you know there's no thermal runaway and um, being able to simulate things when it comes to competition we are informed about our car we can justify our design choices without having to have to spend three times the amount of money that it took to build one car yeah. in order to be able to have physically tested everything so it's absolutely imperative to our design process the driverless team it is completely different to what the EV team do, for example. We're not so close to the manufacturing part, but we're actually more on the software side for getting these cars to race autonomously without a driver. So we start off in the perception systems, we look at sensors and try to gather information about the track. Then we need to plan a path and figure out how quickly we want to race. And all at the same time, we need to try to gather as much sensor data as possible to get a global estimate of what's going on. We have a lot of different software teams and we all contribute to this autonomous racing problem together. And Joe, what are some of the challenges you faced along the way? Um, so, for example, on the software side for the autonomous racing, one of the big problems we face is perception. So what we're working with are these sensors like cameras or LiDAR sensors that give us a very noisy representation of what's around the car. Mm -hmm. And it's our job to then take this data to denoise it and try to reconstruct a, a usable representation of what's around the car so that we can actually race. Because if we can't see the track, we definitely can't race it. And what's the timeline to get this car onto track to race? So we started developing the autonomous driving system last year, and that was designing the core components, the electrical and software. And for the next two years, our plan is to test, validate the software and the designs and to make sure that they're robust and can be used in the real world. After that, we plan to deploy the car in 2025-26 season and hopefully finish top three. We design a new car every single year. Typically, we'd start designing in the September time, and then we'd start manufacture in January. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just before competition, it's all hands on in the garage, making sure this car is looking good. It's, it's all up to the right standards. It's strong enough. And everything that we see in simulation is lining up with on-track performance. Um, I can imagine you've used CFD for the, for the outer shape. Yes, yeah. What's going on on the inside? How are you using the answer simulation to design the inside? Mm. So yeah, as, as you say, like CFD is utilized on the outer body of this car, uh, but we also would use CFD for the internals. Okay. Uh, our battery system is entirely air-cooled, uh, so we need to look at how the air flows through that battery. Mm -hmm. uh, we would take the air coming from the outside of the car, put it through our battery system and then out the rear, uh, cooling the cells, making sure they're nice and low temperature for safety. I have one more very important question. Yeah. 
Can I get in the car? For sure, for sure. <laughs> While this may be the last stop for me, the speed of innovation shows no signs of slowing. This road has led us through some incredible technologies, as well as some memorable adventures. Our mobility experience is getting faster, safer, cleaner, and more connected than ever before. Ever-changing demand, decarbonization, and digital transformation is fueling our future and putting new and inspiring technologies on our roads everywhere, every day. And now it's crystal clear. Whether it's driven on track, trail, or main street, it's driven by simulation.